What's up, my ninjas? I am Strident, and I'm back with another movie review. This time, it is, oh man, Batman Assault on Arkham. Now, I'm not even going to start out with my traditional, like, you know what, man? First, I'll tell you the plot, and then I'm going to go into this part. The plot of the movie, essentially, is that the Riddler came across some very important files dealing with the secret identities of every member of the Suicide Squad, a.k.a. Task Force X. Amanda Waller wants this, but uh, Batman snatched the Riddler up, sent him to Arkham. So she assembles the Suicide Squad to break into Arkham, into their holding area for uh, evidence and, you know, contraband or whatever comes along with these superpowered criminals and get that file back, which he has hidden in his uh, staff. Um, the Suicide Squad in this uh, movie consists of Deadshot, who is kind of the de facto leader somehow, Harley Quinn, Black Spider, Killer Shark, Killer Frost, and Captain Boomerang. Uh, there's uh, KG Beast is in there in the beginning, but he gets killed. Um... So throughout this story, essentially, it, the, the, the movie is kind of directed in a, a wannabe Guy Ritchie style because it's a heist film in, in some kind of way, if you think about it. You know, they're trying to break, you assemble a team of villains, they have to work with other villains, and normally they probably wouldn't be working together, and then they have to break into the asylum and, you know, steal something and get out. Meanwhile, Batman, who was figuring out all these parts and who's dealing with a lot of other stuff that's going on, uh, is going to try to stop all these things from happening. The whole movie is set in the Arkham universe, the Arkham video game universe. So the style of many of the designs, many of them, not all of them, uh, like Batman looks like the Arkham City version, except he has fucked up eyes. It's really weird. He's got these little gray, he's got whited out eyes, but then he's got these little gray pupils. I'm like, why didn't you just make them all white? It's animation. He looks weird when you see him sometimes, like in the face. Um, the film was directed by Jay Oliva and Ethan Spaulding. Jay Oliva has directed awesome films like The Dark Knight Returns 1 and 2 and Flashpoint. Ethan Spaulding directed that mess of a film that was Son of Batman. Um, the movie was written by uh, Heath Corson, who I have no idea. I didn't have time to research him. But it seems like Ethan Spaulding was the weakest link. I'm pretty damn sure. <sighs> this movie, the, the big problem with the movie is this. Even though you have a great director, because Jay Oliver by himself, he doesn't need a co-director. The man understands action better than a lot of the other guys in the industry. He usually picks a really cool team of, uh, you know, character designers and storyboard artists to work with. Or if he doesn't pick them, he usually makes them work. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Um, but his his direction is usually sound. I think this other Ethan Spaulding somehow changed this, or whatever the producers wanted changed this. If you make a film set in a very uh, uh, established universe. The Arkhamverse is dark. The Arkhamverse has its own musical style to it. The Arkhamverse is not a Guy Ritchie movie. Why would you take a very solidified universe and then give it another style? You feel me? It's already established how the Arkhamverse works. You can look at every single game that's been out. There's a decent amount of them for you to see this shit. The, the grime was missing from Arkham. You know, the dirt and grime and the, like, filth that, that is the Arkhamverse was missing. A lot of the designs were too clean and too uh, uh, slick, you know? Then the directorial style of the film itself was... There were all these little quirky things that would have fit in a world... Like, if you directed Arrow, like a Guy Ritchie film... It'd be okay because we haven't established. I mean, now we have, but I'm saying, like, if that's how it had started out, we'd be like, okay, that would fit with Ali in the type of world he's in. But Arrow has that uh, Nolan light kind of style. So if you were to now turn around and direct 
Arrow, like a Guy Ritchie film, people would be like, what the fuck, this isn't Arrow. You get what I'm saying? Um, you don't take something with an established style, a very specific established style, and then try to make that, I'm sorry, try to make that take a backseat for a new style. It's just stupid. So while watching this film, you're, you're hearing blaring generic techno music, and the music in this film also is a crime because a lot of the music sucks ass not to mention besides conroy um i forgot who it is that's voicing harley quinn whoever she is she's really good i think she's the same one that voiced her on the episode of arrow that she showed up on um but there's like a handful of people you know the joker they're fine but everybody else sucks neil mcdonough is horrible when you make him a, a, a badass villain in animation because he doesn't seem to understand how to make things sound natural. He always sounds like a guy reading off of a cue card. Now, when he was playing Green Arrow, he was perfect. There was like some kind of uh, what's the word? It's just he, his 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 dialogue flowed. Maybe it was written better. I don't know. Probably was written better, but it everything flowed and it didn't feel so broken up like this is <coughs> excuse me this is the first line stop at the period wait you know a couple seconds then deliver the rest of the line you know he'd be arguing with people but the lines would be delivered in a very robotic kind of way and it just didn't feel natural and you know if you watched jlu freaking um michael rosenbaum was the voice of Deadshot, and he imitated Kevin Spacey, and it was fucking perfect. All you have to do is watch the episode called Task Force X. That is Floyd. That's the way Deadshot should be. I don't know why people are trying to come in afterwards, and it's strange, too, because Andrea Romano is the voice director for... She was for all of that, and then all of a sudden now, it's like between her and... I guess because Bruce Tim is not there, it just... They, they've lost a lot of what made these things magical. I mean, there hasn't been a good animated uh, DC, uh, you know, DC animated universe film since, uh, fuck, Flashpoint. I mean, unless you count, uh, what's the other one called? Uh, Adventures Through Time. And that was fun. But it didn't have the same kind of oomph that all the others have. So, you know, all in all, I, I'm just, I was disappointed. I was horribly disappointed. And it's not that the movie is not, is, is all shit, you know. It, it just has that, like, this is badass because they said so. You know what I mean? Kind of stamp on it. You know, uh, they put a lot of mature shit, quote unquote, in there. But it makes the story seem more immature than mature. Like, Deadshot humps harley quinn because earlier in the film she hit on him of course Gold. when he decides to go to bed she would be naked in the bed waiting for him you know what i'm saying it just felt out of character i mean maybe she would do that but it you know for the animated universe it just seems so like eh. in the arkham games harley is insanely loyal to the joker so this story just doesn't fit in the arkham universe um characters like black spider he was a one note villain and they didn't even like play it up like that he's one of the the, the most you know notorious assassins in the dc um, universe you know or at least at one time he was instead he just was a, a guy who could fight there was nothing to him and batman still took him out just like he took out everyone else i mean granted we know he will give us a challenge fucking killer shark I would never form a team. I know he's on the uh, Secret Six, or the, maybe it's the Suicide Squad in the comics. I always mix those two up. But uh, he's just not... I, I just... No. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just... The movie just didn't hit the right notes the right way, you know? Batman was like a supporting character in the movie, even though the movie is called Batman Assault on Arkham. It just... It felt like a textbook example of what you do not do with characters like Batman. Now, you know, I say all this, and I guarantee you there's going to be like 5 billion people that are going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about. This movie is fucking awesome. And all of them have the Transformers 
complete set, you know what I'm saying? Or they will when it's released, you know, with Transformers 4 and, you know, whatever other bullshit that they come up with, you know what I'm saying? The movies. You also will say shit like Call of Duty is the greatest shit ever. Not to say that it's not fun, but it's not exactly the best example of storytelling in the medium of, of video games. But you all will love it. It's that bro bullshit, and I think this film will appeal to the bro demographic, you know what I mean? But to the rest of us, you know, and, and, and a lot of the bro demographic fall into the fly-by-night fans of Marvel and DC, you know, because right now there are a lot of films and a lot of media out there that doesn't necessarily portray characters in the right light. And my number one, one of my number ones out there is uh, uh, Super Powered Beatdown. I fucking hate that show. I hate it because you don't, you don't need to ask the people, including people who have no fucking clue. You don't need to ask them who will win in a fight. You need to show them who will win in a fight. These are the same folks that, you know, they drive up the sales of really mediocre shit, but then they complain that they want innovation and they want more and they want better dialogue and, oh, this dialogue sucked or the writing in this movie sucks and they don't understand the difference between the director, the writer, and the producer. You know what I'm saying? These are the same pre people who they make the worst shit dominate, you know? Transformers made billions of dollars on these folks. And I think this movie will be perfect for you guys. But for the rest of us, no. If a 30-minute cartoon could get all this right in 30 minutes, then a, 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 an hour and some change film should be able to do it in spades, especially when some of the same talent is working on it. Now, I know that the DCAU and Warner Brothers Animation has taken a huge hit with uh, Bruce Tim leaving, you know, but he's supposed to be coming back to direct, write and direct uh, uh, Justice League Gods and Monsters, and I think he'll have a hand in uh, the, uh, there's a Batman and Robin story coming up right before that. Batman versus Robin, I think is what it's called. Um, I'm hoping those movies are worth it because I am sick of this shit. It, it's, it's like, you know, I told you I don't give a shit about the DC cinematic universe, you know, and I'm a DC fan. I read both, but I grew up on more of the DC stuff than the Marvel, so there's a small little, you know, my, my meter is a little bit tipped to the DC side in what I'll go to first, you know? But I've thoroughly enjoyed almost all the Marvel movies, with the exception of Iron Man 2 and 3. And uh, the DC movies have been, you know, kind of, eh, you know? It seems like it's all downhill after uh, Man of Steel because they're just not the right people aren't working on it i could be wrong i saw the picture of wonder woman and i was impressed i'm like wow okay and i shouldn't have been impressed because i know that the visual part Zack snyder's got that down you don't have to worry about visuals lacking what you have to worry about is will the story make sense you know now i said i was gonna around the time when they announced the batman versus superman uh, movie, I said, I don't give a shit about that stuff. I'm sticking with the animation. Bruce Tim leaves. The animation starts, the animation department starts kind of dropping off. I mean, war was just, eh. You know what I mean? Uh, Son of Batman was fucking horrible. I mean, it didn't even make sense, a lot of the shit that was going on in there. Like, hey, Talia's gonna hump Batman in front of her son. What? Her 10-year-old son. Like, just these are stupid mistakes that I never thought I'd be seeing in an animated DC universe. You know, anything regarding the animated DC universe. It's not cool. It's not. And in this shit, Arkham City, the Arkham universe in video games. Well, we can ignore origins, but the Arkham universe is very specific you look at the action figures they've got all kinds of textures they've got dirt and grime on them it's it's batman if you run it through a uh a fucking uh, 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 corruption filter you know what i mean like it's the the universe the batman universe is already fucked up it's already corrupt but what if you give the corruption steroids and then run the existing 
<laughs> Gotham and Batman universe through it. Even Batman suit is always cut up, and you know, he's got stubble, and it's all these little things. You know what I'm saying? That just they help make it feel a little bit more uh, like it's been around. Like this has been going on for a long time. The the city feels lived in. The characters feel like they've gone through shit. You know, everything is not slick and clean. Then you get an animated film that completely ignores all these things. You have characters that are from parts unknown that look like no other version of the character that we've seen before. And they, a lot of them look like they could kill Batman. And then in this, that's not the feeling that you get from these characters. I mean, you pulled Killer Frost out of DC's ass, and then they didn't even redesign her in a way that would match the Arkhamverse. Even the version of Killer Frost that's in Injustice actually looks like it could it could work in the Arkhamverse. There were just too many weird generalized design elements that did not fit the general aesthetic of the Arkhamverse. That's me being really 100% character designer, art field experience. I'm just breaking it down. They missed the fucking mark with the visual style of the film if you're supposed to be imitating the Arkhamverse. Uh, pluses? The biggest plus was that Amanda Waller was there, and it was the fat, old-school Amanda Waller, voiced by uh, CCH Pounder. Um, I love that, because that's what made her uh, a unique character, is that she wasn't beautiful and then, you know, trim with this perfect hourglass shape, just like every other girl in animation, just about, or every other superheroic female. She's this imposing woman of stature <laughs> and you're supposed to be like shit she's fat she's mean as hell but you gotta respect her because she commands that they got that i'll give them that batman was voiced by kevin conroy that's always a plus and the animation and the fights was fucking amazing i gotta give him props for that the action was really well done um but the rest of it i mean somehow of course the joker would be a part of this story like when is the Joker not the center of attention in a DC Batman something or other? You know what I'm saying? Like, you couldn't possibly write this story, since it takes place before the Arkham games, you couldn't write this and put the emphasis on someone else? I mean, seriously. When I saw that it was being, uh, I first heard that it was being announced, I just wasn't really impressed with what I saw. I was like, you know, whatever, I'll just wait and see it. Now it came out. My hunch was right. This movie was not, it wasn't a good movie. I mean, granted, if you sit, if you wait for the next action sequence, you'll enjoy it on that level, the same way we enjoy some old kung fu movies. But in comparison to all the animated stuff that's come beforehand, you know, from Mask of the Phantasm to Flashpoint Paradox, this movie is garbage, you know? So I'm not going to recommend it. I know others will say, oh, it was fun, I enjoyed it because they're not looking at it with the critical the same kind of critical eye I am but what's the point of a review if you're not going to look at a, at the subject with a critical eye tell me that riddle me this you know um so anyway that's my story and I'm sticking to it the movie seemed like it sucked donkey balls um a lot of things felt very you know just taped together it didn't feel like a, a very well thought out plot that actually had parts that intricate pieces that would make things work the way they should um, there were aspects of people's personalities that were done right which means somebody in the crew understood what the characters are supposed to act like but overall the movie is a missed step with the most important things it doesn't feel like it takes place in the Arkham City universe that I spent umpteen hours in. Shit, I'm replaying Arkham City right now. I've been playing it for, uh, like, slowly trying to take in everything for the last uh, month and some change. Maybe two months, uh, about a month and a half. And this does not feel like the same Arkham that I was in. I mean, there's parts you see when they show you these far shots. You see things that you've seen in the game, but from far away you see it when you get up close it just doesn't feel the same you know so whatever anyway i'm strident like i said this is my story i'm sticking to it don't really waste your time on this one uh i guess i will see you on the next video peace outside